Good afternoon, Mr. Haraguchi, Chair. I'm David Alarcon on behalf of the Land Use Research Foundation. First of all, thank you very much for the opportunity to comment on the proposed rules and strategic plan and uh, flow chart. Uh, we would like to commend PLDC for providing the website and uh, frequently asked questions and other information on the website for people to, uh, to view. And for having, I believe I counted six to eight public hearings on the rules. And this is either the seventh or eighth public hearing, including the one on the river islands, uh, I believe. Uh, on not public hearings, it includes the board hearings, includes the introduction at the board. So including board hearings and these public hearings, I believe it's between six and eight hearings where the community had the opportunity to comment, so I commend you on that. Um, we would note, however, by the testimony here and, and otherwise, that there are very many concerns that the public has, and, and we would respectfully uh, recommend that PLDC um, you know, seek to provide yet even more public information, and um, not only to the public, but to the new council members. We would note that the council resolutions were passed by council members who will no longer be in office on many of whom will no longer be in office on January 1st. Uh, perhaps go back to the counties and, and explain, uh, you know, the purpose and, and the objectives of PLDC and also have uh, information on your website and available to the public to answer the many questions that were raised here, good questions that were raised here by the public. Um, we reviewed the rules and uh, as you folks know, we have experience in, with government rules and we would say that these rules, strategic planning, and the flowchart is not a mess. And in fact, um, right now, various different state agencies have the powers to lease or otherwise uh, allow for the use of lands. And PLDC is a way to have one agency, one agency in charge of the use of state lands which is right now in the jurisdiction of several different agencies with several different processes. So it brings it all home to one agency. And we would also note that this process and the PLDC is consistent and similar with how other states handle the use of public lands. Um, we hope that um, we hope that the public will have ample opportunity to come in and participate uh, in the board hearing, and, and it wasn't raised, it might have been raised earlier, but everyone is going to have the opportunity to testify at the PLDC board hearing where all the board members could be present and these rules are brought before you. So everybody will have yet another opportunity to comment in front of the full board. Um, in fact, these rules are more stringent than the land use process of many other agencies, including the LNR's lease process and DLNR's conservation district use application process, more stringent than the LUC boundary amendment process, more stringent than the HCDA or Hawaii Community Development Authority HCDA approvals. This is based on uh, what's in your strategic plan and the flowchart, just looking at all the, all the uh, I guess, process in the flowchart. Also more stringent than the Hawaii Housing Finance and Development <coughs> Corporation their 201H affordable housing approvals, which uh, in this past year has uh, agreements for over 3,000 affordable housing units. And your folks' procedures are more stringent than what they do, um, based on your strategic plan and that flowchart, and also more stringent than the Department of Hawaiian Homelands project approvals, and there are other agencies that have similar exemptions. Um, we just have a few comments on the strategic plan and flowchart. We support the listing of the various laws which are applicable for applicable to the PLDC. And I think by listing these laws, it would give comfort to the people who are concerned about the process. Listing that the PLDC shall comply with the EIS law, shall comply with the historic preservation law, shall comply with the sunshine law, shall comply with the wage and hour law, shall comply with the restriction on the sale of ceded lands. No sale of ceded lands. Uh, consistent, PLDC shall comply with the state law related to contractors. 
and the PLDC must pay OHA any ceded land revenues as required by the HRS. These things are very important to have, uh, not only in the law, but in, in your rules, and also the fact that the PLDC will not sell any state or county lands, will not sell any <coughs> state or county lands without the legislature's approval or co county approval that's required. So you folks do not have the right, legal right, to just go ahead and sell any state or any public land. I think it's important that the public, um, you know, that everyone understands that. We also believe that um, the, the paragraph in the strategic plan relating to IAL uh, might, might need to be revised. The PLDC should have the flexibility to support projects on state IAL lands. The current draft guidelines prohibit development, even agricultural development, on lands eligible for designation as important agricultural lands, or IAL. Um, you know, this has several problems, four problems that we've noted in our testimony. It could prevent worthy public-private partnerships and IAL and agricultural projects on state IAL lands and other agricultural lands. Uh, secondly, such a guideline is unnecessary as the IAL law already requires the Department of Agriculture and DLNR to identify, map, and designate all public lands which should be IAL. The current IAL law requires Department of Agriculture and DLNR to identify, map, and designate all public lands, all public lands which should be important ag lands. That's in the law. And it also requires that the Land Use Commission designate all of those lands that are recommended by Department of Agriculture and DLNR. So, uh, the second point is that guideline might be unnecessary. The third uh, point is the vague reference to eligible for designation is vague and ambiguous. We would note that the current law and the existing HRS 205-44.5, HRS 205-44.5, which requires uh, Department of Ag and DLNR to designate, identify, map, and designate IAL. It does not use the term eligible. Okay, eligible creates a very vague term, and um, it could also embroil the PLDC in ongoing litigation related to agricultural lands that are, quote, eligible, unquote, uh, for designation as IAL. And lastly, we would respectfully recommend, on this point, uh, we would respectfully recommend that this section be revised, in fact, to encourage encourage public pri public private partnerships for agricultural projects which are consistent with the IAL law, or which otherwise support the agricultural industry and which support the goals and objectives of the Department of Agriculture. So we feel that the PLDC should be encouraging projects that are recommended by the Department of Agriculture. Um, for state lands. I got a, a few other comments. The strategic plan and provisions should be consistent with the language of Act 55 in the statute. We that understand and we've seen that there are several changes in the language that are order. inconsistent. They're inconsistent. Point of order. You, there's no such thing as one word. You, oh, are, you, are, you, are, you, you were allowed to speak here, are You were allowed to speak longer, so we're giving him the time. Just call time. Just common courtesy. Okay. okay, I'll try to wrap it up. The um, the law the law provides that um, you know certain provisions be applicable to PLDC and the strategic plan changes that language. Any changes to the language could delay the review of projects and cause litigation. Uh, next, we recommend that the PLDC encourage partnerships with all businesses. We would note that the uh, plan, the strategic plan, only refers to small businesses. So that could cause confusion. And lastly, uh, we would recommend that the uh, draft flow chart should be revised to be consistent with applicable rules and procedures of other similar state agencies which deal with land use approvals. And we mentioned those, DLNR, LUC, HCDA. Lastly, with respect to um, Chapter 302, just a general comment. Just a general comment, last. 
the How many the, minutes was it? The proposed, minutes. Two minutes or three. The proposed PRDC processes and rules to reflect relevance, reasonableness, and appropriate understanding of the development and financing process. And we've attached proposed draft amendments. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The last speaker. Was that organized?